Hello, my name is Jeff Mazur, my client manager here in North America, and today I want to walk you through an overview of the manufacturing scheduling options within IFS. We'll be focusing on the new IFS Cloud 21R1 version and uh, show you some of the, the forms and functions within there. Um, you know, one of the things we've always found is, you know, customers over time have had maybe issues getting the right data out of the system and such. So I'm going to focus this session a little bit, maybe not on the end result of like manufacturing visualizer and some of the other tools that are out there, but um, some of the basic data that's required to make sure that you're getting the right end result and such. And some new customers will get benefit. Existing customers that maybe have lost people over time and such, we find that, all right, people aren't necessarily maintaining some of the basic data and, and understanding all the different pieces to make sure that you do get the end results for your, your scheduling uh, process to, to give you adequate results uh, that you're looking for. So I'll focus on that a little bit today here. Um, we will be focusing on the 21R1 version, the IFS Cloud version, and this is the latest version of IFS, it was released in March of um, uh, 2021, and it allows you to have a new user interface um, for, the, for the users out there, and we run on many different platforms, uh, we do have you can run on, on Chrome, on Edge, on all the modern browsers. You can run it on your iOS, your your uh, your Android devices, your Window devices and such. And it's really the same IFS applications. It's the same business logic. It's the same functionality. If you're running this on your, your desktop PC um, at the office or if you're running it on your tablet or on your phone, you're still accessing the same IFS applications. It's not a light version or, or other things. It's dynamically resizes itself for the device that you're on, um, but it is the same IFS applications across the board there. Um, you know, we, we do tend to focus on like the aerospace and defense industry, energy utilities, construction, engineering, infrastructure, manufacturing, obviously, we'll be paying a little more attention to today. And then obviously our service industries for field service and for preventative maintenance and other, other items like that. Um, we do have the, the full gamut of, of, of options within here where we've got our, obviously our enterprise resource planning ERP type system, but we also have enterprise asset management and service management that's all tied in on one platform. It's one IFS solution across the board. So you can, you know, go through the full process of taking a CRM business opportunity or business lead converting that into an actual order, um, building it, um, managing it, uh, that build process through your system, through your supply chain processes with an IFS. And then you could get into managing that asset once you delivered it out to the field. And then your long-term service management type agreements and asset management functionality is all tied in. So you get a full life cycle picture of a, of a product from the time you initiate the initial contact with that customer to maybe five or ten years down the road where you're still servicing that product out in the field and you've got a service contract for example for that so uh, we we provide that on one platform so you have one one point to go into one system to look at all that information um, we do call this the ifs cloud 2021 r1 version um, but we do offer this both on premise and in the cloud. So you can have a remote installation of this wherever you may need it to be on your corporate servers and, you know, another cloud offering and stuff. But IFS does offer the managed cloud services. Um, so you can run it on both. We try and give, make sure that you know that you have options out there. So, and then, um, oh, sorry about that. We do have some roadmaps that are updated a couple times a year. <laughs> Um, you can go to the IFS community. So if you haven't logged in there, go to community.ifs.com, set up an account uh, with a username and a password, and you'll get into all the information that you need to see about, you know, one, obviously these roadmap type documents uh, where we do kind of a strategic statement of direction and then the roadmap based on each individual functional area. So the, the statement of direction gives you the overview of some of the you know, maybe higher level topics, advanced scheduling and optimization, machine learning. What are, what is IFS 
planning to do in those types of areas or you get down to remote and self-managed cloud operating models and things so you can start to see where our future direction is for that and then if you want to get into individual functional areas you can start to see what what are the new functionality items that are going to be planned to come out over over time so that was that's where the roadmap document but the community gives you a wealth of other information, so you'll definitely want to get logged into there. If you want to see what's coming up, um, differences, you want to see these videos and links to these types of videos, um, you, you can get all that information. Plus, it allows you a big um, opportunity to network with other customers, partners, and IFS people for questions and other discussions. Um, the release management here for the version numbering, just to be clear, I mean, the product name is IFS Cloud um, for those customers that have been around for a while. You know, we've had IFS apps 8, 9, and 10, and think of this kind of as apps 11, but it's being called IFS Cloud. And then we're going to have biannual releases for this each spring and fall to do major functionality type releases and such. And then we'll have service updates uh, monthly. So patching, patch type items um, that you'd normally get maybe four times a year if you're on apps nine or 10 today and you're taking, taking regular updates, those are four times a year. We've moved this out a little bit to change, change it a little bit to say, let's get the patches out to customers a little bit quicker. Major functional releases and functional changes will be coming out in the major releases then twice a year. So here's just another visual of that. So if you're on nine or 10, We've had that quarterly. We've been doing this for a long time for the, the different updates. So kind of quarterly updates has been our marching you know, path here. So March, June, September, December, every year kind of coming out with major updates for Apps 10. Apps 10 is supported through March of uh, 2025 and then extended support can go through 2028. And then the IFS Cloud version again, same basic concept with releases, but it's just going to be the major release will come out with functional improvements um, twice a year. So next year you'll see 2021 R1 or 2022 R1, 22 R2, and then 23 R1, 23 R2, and so on. And then every month there'll be a service update that is released. For those of you coming from the other versions and such, you can kind of see what we've been up to over the last many years um, as our R&D has been providing enhancements to the software. This gives you a kind of an idea of, you know, if you're coming from App 7.5 or App 8 or App 9, how many enhancements over the prior versions are out there that you can look forward to taking advantage of. There is a document out on the IFS community page. So again, another reason to get logged into, that's a spreadsheet that shows those differences and gives you the enhancements by different functional areas, accounts payable, accounts receivable, um, supply chain type changes that are that are out there. We do want to make sure it's clear that everybody understands we do want to be the, the, the vendor that gives you the choice um, on, on your, your deployment models. So even though we call it the IFS cloud version, um, we're kind of joining a lot of different products um, into, into that cloud version and more will be rolled in in the future. But so we've, we've chosen instead of just focusing on IFS applications, we call it the IFS cloud. And we are looking to make sure that you know that you can run it in the IFS managed cloud services. You can have a third party hosted type solution. So you can be running it somewhere else in some, uh, some other uh, data center or some other cloud solution, or you can run it on premise. So basically from our standpoint, you know, you can either run it in the IFS managed cloud or your remote. If you're remote, you can put it virtually anywhere. Um, there's probably um, some, some options there that, that you can always look at. So we wanna be flexible and allow you to host that database um, where you need to and um, allow you to make sure that you know that over time you can move from one to the other and the database is portable. So you'll see that sometimes that the data, you know, we're portable. So um, you can move that database from one to the other as, as your business needs change or, 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 you know, let's say you get into a certain industry and it has to be on site or on premise and you were in the cloud. You can move it there or you can go from on premise out to the cloud at any point in time. So with some technical work and configuration. Um, so that's a little overview of the IFS cloud version. 
the introduction kind of to our manufacturing functions that we're doing. Um, you know, obviously over time, IFS have, has been a, a strong leader in um, the ERP software industry for manufacturing companies. And we want to make sure that we retain that global supplier of, you know, being cloud enabled manufacturing ERP software. So some of the things you'll see is being able to run this on a tablet or a phone or or at your desk and such. So we're keeping up with the industry and we're, we're trying to be the leaders in, in that area. And I think we're doing a very good job at that. Um, we, we do make sure that we're, we're focusing on areas from the manufacturing standpoint of, you know, engineer to order manufacturers, configure to order. We've got our CTO suite, we've got make to order, you know, mixed mode manufacturers. A lot of times you might have some, some functions in your business that are make to stock, some are make to order, some are configured to order, some are job shop type custom manufacturers, um, and then manufacturers with short product, product cycles. So things like um, utilizing tools like production scheduling and the Kanban tools that we have within the software help, you know, across the board here. Um, but we try and make sure that we're we're being the leader in, in these areas. And I think we're doing a very good job at that. So hopefully you'll see that in the new version and, you know, that we're continuing to, to focus on those areas. One of the things we want to do is make sure that we're giving you accurate data um, in the system. And I'll cover more of the basic data pieces here in just a moment. I'll take you into the software. But the end result is we want to end up with some tools for your, you know, for this session, we're focusing on manufacturing planning and the planning tools within IFS a little bit to make sure that your planners have the, the data presented to them accurately. This is just an example of a lobby page within IFS where you can have your manufacturing planning information provided to a particular planner for a particular site going out X number of days. So let me show me all my orders for the next 30 days or 10 days or 60 days or whatever, you know, you, you kind of set some of that, you know, and then you can do it by planner, by project, um, different, different categories and such. But when you do that, the IFS lobby functionality is all real time data within IFS. So all this information is being updated. So where in the past you might have had to have your planners have maybe some custom reports that they got to go print out and they have to take a look at things to try and figure out what are my orders that I need to focus on. Um, making sure you have the basic data set up that we'll take a look at in, in, in just a little bit, your calendars, your work centers, your lead times and stuff is, is, is very critical to making sure that the end result here is, is giving you the proper information to take action on on a daily basis so think about it your planner can log in in the morning start to take a look kind of maybe from left to right their most critical items that they need to take a look at and then maybe some other things that they need to pay attention to throughout the day um, they, they can take a look at it but um, oops, sorry I hit my mouse wrong there um, the shop order requisition pass due the overloaded work centers for the next 28 days you can start to get a some information about your various load hours based on work center load, labor load, and such. But again, it all, it's all driven off the basic data. So a lot of times customers have either lost people or if you're a new customer, obviously it's good to know about, but you know, you, you maybe lose people and maybe you have some of this information here, but people aren't maintaining the basic data behind the scenes to make sure that you have your accurate capacity setting and your accurate lead times and such in the system. So that's what I'll be reviewing a little bit, but the end result is getting to something like this. Um, so you don't have to run 10 or 20 different queries in the system and you don't have to run 10 or 20 different reports to get out the information that you need. You can have all that information presented to you here, whether it's MRP, master scheduling, shop order related. Um, you can design these pages. It's a lobby page within IFS. So you can design these to make it adequate for the person that's doing the, the role at the time. And these lobby pages are throughout the application, whether you're an accounts payable, accounts receivable, general ledger, purchasing, things like that. But again, this is a manufacturing planning overview. So within IFS, we've got the, you know, kind of a lot of information that you can utilize. Um, to get proper plans in the system you know we have project requirements planning we have to do some high level sales and operational planning there's some new functionality out there in those areas that we think i think we've got a couple 
recordings on those topics as well. Um, but then, you know, we obviously have our master scheduling and our forecasting tools. So we do have the IFS demand planner that you can do your, your, your generating, you know, what your forecast numbers are that can feed into the master schedule, help you with resource planning and, and, and things such as that. And then you get into your capacity planning, CRP and MRP that are driving off of, of those those items. And we've got demand-driven MRP now in the IFS applications. Um, we've got a session on that. Uh, we've got order proposals. Um, so reorder point type planning if you're not using um, the MRP and, and other areas like that. But you can you can mix and match. You know, some parts might be better to have a reorder point planning versus being planned by MRP. It depends on dependent or independent demand and such. And we support all that mixed mode planning and, and tying all that in together. And we do some advanced planning board and some advanced scheduling. Um, dynamic order processing is a little bit more for um, uh, true uh, make to order type environments where you have to have orders pegged all the way through, kind of hard pegging all the way down through. Um, your, your, your product structure. Dynamic order processing is a great tool for that. Uh, we do inventory planning and replenishment for reorder type planning and helping you set your safety stocks and, um, you know, as, as different data needs to be changed in the system, the system can help manage that so your reorder point planning can be done better. We've got Kanban uh, to help you plan for materials, whether or not you're whether or not you're just using that internally as a visual system or an electronic signaling system, um, you can set up your Kanban system as well. So we have a lot of tools in here, but again, it kind of always goes back to that basic data. So I'm gonna jump into the software here and start to show you some of the forms within the IFS cloud version. Okay, so jumping into the software here we've got the work center which is one of the basic areas that you need to look at and pay attention to when you're you're doing your manufacturing scheduling to make sure the basic data is set up properly here i have an example of a work center it's in the ifs cloud version so you can see that um, probably looks a little different for those of you coming from the IFS Enterprise Explorer or the older versions of the IFS software, but it should be very familiar to you. Um, like most of the forms in, in the IFS Cloud version, you're going to see some header information. And you're still going to see your tab information, so you can go to the details and the costs, the resources, and such. But it works a little bit differently. Um, some of your right mouse buttons, well, all your right mouse buttons go away, and you know you're going to have access to those functions that are valid at that point in time on that form through some of the the links up here uh, that you can you can jump to and click on so when you write mouse button because it's an HTML um, uh, forms um, when you write mouse button you're get I'm in Google Chrome now so I get the Google Chrome write mouse buttons so um, but your options are still there you can still do the same functions and such that you have over on the left you still have your shortcut list here so I can have my list of different shortcuts that I like to jump to add bookmark edit bookmark when you're on different pages I can do my home screen I've got my uh, recently used screens here so I still have that option um, and I still have my navigator so if I expand this out here I'm in the manufacturing standard work center and production line and here I've got kind of my trail up through here too that I can always click on and jump to different functions so similar to what you can do in some of the IEE forms and such um, so um, but a little different look and feel there's some other functions you can do to change your personalization and your appearance and such so you can change some of the colors and the color themes if you want light or dark and, and different options there so you got some personalization there as well um, but to get back into the function here um, I'm just going to minimize the navigator here so I get a little more real estate and I can see I just kind of populated for all my work centers in a particular site here so I can scroll down through and I can click on the various ones and, and have that information brought up over on the right I see my work center a couple of things to, to keep in mind here um, you know obviously your calendar is a very important um, function to be able to, to go to and we want to be able to take a look at those so you can just hit control 
click on that link and it'll jump right over to that calendar. So again, a little different navigation. You don't have to click the zoom button. You just click through the different functions. And now I can click on my schedule and get down to, you know, in this case, I've got a five day week to shift um, starting on Monday. And from here, I can jump into the schedule, which takes me to my day types. So the calendar is very important to make sure you've got the right calendar on the right work center for the right time periods that, that you're working on. And, you know, when you drill into the calendar, again, this is something you want to make sure you generate at least once a year. Make sure that the, the calendars are regenerated going out uh, at least a couple years. And there are some jobs that you can use to, to schedule that and, and get that going. But then, uh, you know, once you drill into the date type, you want to make sure that this information is set up as well. You know, so when you're looking at scheduling shop orders and you want to get that right data on that lobby page, you want to make sure that the basic data behind the scenes is, is set up properly. So you're getting the right capacities and, and the system can actually schedule based on that proper data that you have. So the kind of at the low level here, we're at the date type field, but you can see how easy it is to just drill down in through here, through the IFS cloud uh, version here. And you can quickly get into here and say, yeah, we go from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. is first shift, second shift is 4 to midnight. Um, there's different calendar periods here as well, whether it's an eight hour period and others. So, and I can just use my back arrows just through my navigator to to go back up through and drill back down through and see what my different date types offer and such but making sure that you're maintaining that calendar on a at least an annual basis is is important and key and if I jump back I'm just using my back arrow I don't know if you can see that I might have hidden that um, on, on this demo but I'm just using my back arrow and and forward arrow just on my navigator in Google Chrome to, to move through those forms pretty quickly. So now I'm right back at my work center. I could have clicked the home button as well and, and jump back to it. Making sure that calendar ID is pro proper is, is extremely important once we get into kind of your, your different resources and figuring out your capacity. So here I've got 16 hours a day. Um, and when I look at my capacity, tab within the work center, I was going to make sure that my different work days are calculating properly going out into the future. And we've got 16 hours a day on that calendar, but in this case, I've got two different resources on that particular work center. So it gives me 32 hours. I've got two machines that can run 16 hours each, so it gives me 32 hours. So making sure, you know, from your calendar, your resources, and that your capacity calculations are, are coming out correct is, is very important. Um, one of the things you'll notice is making sure you're calculating some of the average capacity demonstrated and your work center resource capacities on a regular basis as well to make sure that that data is updated if you are making changes to your calendar or let's say you add a resource or you delete a resource um, uh, from, from an area, you can do that. So. Yeah, we've got a couple different options to drill into the resources here. Um, I can go to this here. This says tied to an actual object ID, a uh, Aquino machine, and I can go to resource details. I can go to the equipment object here right from, from the work center. I can also do that from the header area. So there's a couple different ways to navigate and get to where you need to be. If I want to, I can expand and contract these different windows and panes kind of just by clicking it in the header here. But again, making sure your capacity values here are looking proper is a very important first first step. You've got a few other fields there like utilization and efficiencies and such that you can take advantage of on the work center to make sure that that data is, is set up properly. And, you know, going through your details here, once you calculate, let's say your capacity, calculate average and demonstrated capacity, You'll see it interacts a little bit differently. It doesn't have a pop-up window, but it, the window slides over to the left here and you can go through and say, how many number of days do I want to look at for, for my average, to calculate my average capacity? This is looking at actual data from your, from your actual shop orders and helping you set that value properly so you can do some good analysis. And then, you know, when's your calculation date? And then you can click OK and it'll reset your average capacity and then your demonstrated capacity is going to be you know, what, what you've actually been doing as well. So based on live data.
from your work center and your time reports and such from the shop orders. Um, you can always reschedule shop orders. If you're making changes to these, um, you can click on reschedule shop orders um, and that'll take you through that process as well. So there's some nice tools within the work center to make sure that you, you understand. And, and again, so that end result, once you get make some changes or you're tweaking your data, the end result is that you're getting the right information on your lobby pages and your other, other reports within IFS that you're running. Okay, so outside of the work center, another area that we tend to have to cover sometimes with customers is the inventory part and some of the planning data, making sure you've got your proper lead time set up. Um, this comes in, in your proper planning planning codes on the part so that when you're doing your MRP runs and such, you know, and you've got an order, customer order or a shop order out there driving the lower level demands, the system's properly planning your purchase orders or other supply orders from other shop orders out there and such, and giving you adequate time to build it and get the material or get the materials in house. So the inventory part form again, you know, from the IFS um, cloud version, it's, you know, you can search through it, you can do a find a page, you can type in the information to find any page that you want if you know the name. Otherwise, you can navigate through the navigator and we can just keep drilling back. I'll show you that here real quick so you can see. Here you still have your navigator with accounting rules and financials and part master data and um, engineering service management. So the, the navigator type items that you're used to seeing, um, um, you still have access those so you can go into supply chain planning you go to demand planning sales and ops planning resource requirements mrp um, all those different areas just through the navigator so but i'm going to hide that now just to minimize it here i just did a search for my site 101 for all my inventory parts but obviously i can have different search i've got an advanced searched in here and i can do my different settings to add different search fields out here um, if i want to just get rid of that list of values I can just click on the the arrows here and it kind of expands and contracts that that column there um, the inventory part you know uh, I mentioned a couple things one is obviously the lead time that's always something that historically we've always had discussions with customers and making sure that um, they, they set that information properly in the system and there's a lot of different things around the lead time that I'll cover in a minute. But um, you'll notice here just off the inventory part, I can scroll down. I can kind of expand and contract some of the different areas that you might be used to seeing in different different tabs going across on the inventory. But here's my lead time and supply dates. So here's my purchasing lead time, my manufacturing lead times here. Again, those things can be calculated off of the different lead time values that are out there. And there's some jobs that will run to help maintain and manage those items so if you've got a routing tied to a manufactured part that routing will help develop what the lead time is for that manufactured part but if you come in here and you have a zero lead time or a one day lead time and you're not getting proper results from mrp and such a lot of times that's because customers aren't maintaining these and updating them as they should so definitely something to keep an eye on and, and maintain and, and do um, the other area is some of the planning data but before we get into that, I'm going to just show you another functional area that, that you know, making sure you know that you've got access to, to help type functions within the system. So we can always jump to page help and get you some more information on the functional aspects of these. Okay, so once you get into, you know, trying to, to learn a little bit more about the software, one of the areas I've always pointed customers to through the years is the, the help files. And sometimes it can be... A little overwhelming you, know, you hit the f1 help and you go to the page and boy where do i go from here one of the main things i always point customers to is to read through some of the about sections and those are usually up at the top of the pages if they're there for, for that functionality but like for inventory part and some of your other planning areas there's there's just a lot of wealth of information out here to, to read through um, but if you just come to this page and you look through it it can be a little overwhelming but you know you can get to your activity diagrams and all your activities but you got to take a little time to go through some of those items to see what they each do but let's say you want to get to you know a white paper about lead times and understand all the lead times and how are my how does those how do those implicate or interact with ifs and and and, and interact with my planning functions well here's just a 
great page. I mean, you can see there's a lot of information. There's a lot of links here within this page. And you can see that all of a sudden there's a lot of different areas you can fill in lead times to help you better plan in your whole supply chain planning function and such. Um, and this really reads through all your different, you know, your total purchase lead times. Well, within purchase lead times, there's supplier manufacturing, external transport time, transport lead times, intro. There's a lot of different places you can put lead times in into the system. And understanding all of those is, is tends to be a very uh, important area to focus on so that you know that you're getting the right results from the system when MRP is trying to schedule and say, yeah, here's what my lead time is for my, my end item, and here's what my planning tools are for my, you know, this feeds into your procurement type teams as well, not just the manufacturing side, because, you know, for the materials that you're purchasing through MRP for your for your shop orders, um, you want to make sure that you've got enough planning time built in to make sure that you're getting a realistic schedule um, with your vendors. So, as you can see, there's a lot of different areas you can add lead times in, supplier ship via transit on customer order, so it feeds into the customer order side as well when you're trying to figure out what your, you know, when does the customer want it on their customer order and what's my planned ship date? Well, I have to figure out uh, some of the ship via versus by different transit type times and such. So you can read down through this. It's a good tool to, to go through and learn and study, but customers have always asked over the years, where are the white papers on different functionalities and different features in the system? You know, the about sections is a, is a very good area to go through. And you can always go through IFS application. When you're in the F1 help files, um, you can get some business process models here. Um, you can go through topics in IFS application um, using the application client and, and some of that. So it gives you some pointers too on just even using the online documentation. So um, a lot of information out here, but let's say you want to find out about demand-driven MRP and what's the new functionality in the new version. So you can read about that. It gives you all that information and gives you a, a, a good understanding of where it's at. Um, outside of lead times on the inventory part, there's always the planning data tab on there. So the other place I've pointed customers to a lot over the years is the about planning methods and um, and some of these other about information areas. If you want to know about order proposals or purchase requisitions and such, but a lot of times customers are like, well, I'm just going to put a uh, planning method of A on my inventory part, lot for lot, which is great. It works for, it's probably one of the more popular ones that are out there, that most customers use, but you don't always realize there's a lot of other ones out there. There's A, there's B, there's C. We go all the way down through the list here. Um, you get to order cover time, another popular one through through for MRP and such. But there's there's other different ways to uh, to utilize the system. And, and if you're doing phantom parts or blow through parts, next level demand is something not widely used, but again, it's out there and, and could be useful for, for customers. But understanding what each of these different planning methods are and then doing some testing, you know, change your part from an A to a G part and see what the MRP results are for the order cover time versus lot for lot. Or, you know, some of these are used for master scheduling. Um, and, and you know, some of your other planning data and stuff. But if you're interested in those things, you can see we've got a lot. Of, it goes from A to T. So there's a lot of different planning codes out there that might be useful for customers. A lot of times they don't explore that or they don't test it and they don't get into that. They use the, the A or the G and that's about it. And then they never really go back to it. So it's a good thing to, to read through and understand what these are. Um, if you're doing reorder type planning, um, you know, the order point planning of B or C. So that's not going to be utilized by MRP, but there's a reorder point planning function within MRP um, that drives off of your, you know, your, your planning data tab. Um, but it, it'll generate requisitions just like MRP generates requisitions. Um, it doesn't do all the, the netting and all the not quite as intricate, but if you're doing more of a service type industry or you got service parts or other things that have more independent depend, independent demand type parts, um, you know, order point planning is a great tool as well. And it's there and it can be utilized in the same system, in the same site, different parts, you know, acting, you know, scheduling different ways. It's usually up to that planner um, to, to decide what the best 
planning method is for that particular part. But making sure that they've got access to <laughs> this information is, is a good idea. Okay, so back to the inventory part itself here. Um, again, I'm in the Office Cloud version, so you can get to things like the planning data that we we're just talking about. Um, if I click on inventory details, I can go to part planning data, and it'll jump over to that information for me. So I can maintain that. I can change my planning methods here. Um, I've got my drop down list. I can go and select my different planning methods here. And then making sure things like safety stock, lead time, order points, lot size, mins and maxes are, are set properly um, is very important. So for those of you coming from IEE, hopefully a lot of this looks very familiar to you. Um, just a little different way to act, you know, to navigate through it. But once you go through it a couple of times, you'll, you'll, you'll get it pretty quick. Um, the other thing too is, again, we mentioned earlier is that we can have um, this IFS application running on any device that we want to. So if I if I have this here, I can bring it up within um, the IFS um, different clients like the Galaxy S5, or if I want to see what it looks like. This is just an emulator through through Google Chrome, but it'll show you what it looks like on your iPad. So if you're out in the shop walking around and you want to do a quick lookup, it's going to be the same form and functions that you have sitting at your desktop. It's just sized dynamically a little bit differently. So you can see your planning data tab here. You can do your search for your part number here. You can, you know, and this isn't just for inventory. This is everything within the IFS applications that you can do from there. So um, it gives you a good visual on, you know, yes, you can, you could run this. It's just dynamically sized differently. It's the exact same part planning data tab, exact same inventory part form um, as we navigate through the system. So I'm going to jump back to, um, the full screen and there we are so some good things to take a look at is you know obviously the work center the capacities um, making sure your calendars are set up making sure your um, capacities on your work centers are, are set properly with the basic data so that when you do run your capacity requirements planning and the system goes out and looks to schedule these shop orders that you've got the right information in the system so okay so once you've got some of that basic data all set up you know that that's proper and you start to run MRP and it's starting to generate some of your shop orders and purchase orders and such that are out there um, one of the nice tools that it's out there for for some of the schedulers is to use the MRP action proposals workbench um, it's a nice tool with an IFS allows you to apply some filters to uh, select by by parts, sites, uh, planners, and, and different information. Um, a lot of you hopefully have looked at the MRP action messages in the past, but um, if you haven't, this is a nice tool um, to, to log into and see what MRP is, is telling you to do and uh, where, where some of your issues are. So you can go down through and see demand or supply is past due, and you can see the different MRP messages that are being uh, sent out based on different orders and different parts that are out there. Uh, if I scroll down a little bit, as I select different parts, I can see their supply, open supply and demand orders right on this window. So I can scroll down through here and I can just click on this to expand and contrast it. So open up that pane or close it up. So um, I can see all the details, um, kind of your inventory part availability planning, all your master scheduling demands, your purchase orders, um, shop order materials. Um, I can see all that information. I can see order number. So it's a good kind of one place to, to stop in and see what's going on with your parts. Um, the other thing too is if you start to not be sure if you're set up with your, your proper lead times and your other planning data and such. Um, one of the things I always point out customers to is this MRP part information um, outside of the inventory part availability planning and such that a lot of people use. The MRP part information is really what tells me when I've had to investigate and figure out what's going on with, 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 with a particular part or what MRP is telling me. The MRP part information, I can drill right into it and I can see here's all my gross requirements. I can see all my demand and supplies and I can start to figure out which orders are causing a particular issue. So um, it's a little bit different than you know, a lot of the same data that you'll see on the inventory part availability planning, but a little more detailed into 
what is MRP thinking and why is it calculating this way? So it starts to tell me what's my parent part that's driving this particular demand. So I can really get a lot of information from here. And this is some place I've pointed many customers through over the years and seems to help a little bit once they get into the details here, because then you can really start to understand what it's what it's doing. So I can <clears throat> go through here to it for my MRP part information, action proposals, my peg supplies, um, any other information that's being to, created and some of the details with the planning codes. And then I can, again, go to inventory part availability planning, or I can do some bottom-up planning here um, to go from the component level up to the top. So it helps me get a lot of good information pretty quick. Um, and again, hopefully with the IFS Cloud version, it's a little easier to jump around and, and drill down into the details uh, just a little quicker. Um, so here you can go right from here. I can jump right to the master scheduling or right to the purchase order. I just use these uh, three ellipses over here and um, go to supply demand detail. So many different ways to navigate here, or I can just click or if I'm on my phone or tablet, I could just touch the supply and demand details link here as well as I'm highlighting different areas. So it's a good tool to use and be familiar with that it's out there. Okay, so hopefully that helps you understand a little bit of the basic data and some of the tools that we have out there, but making sure that you're making, you know, keeping an eye on that information is, is very key. And again, the end result is so you end up with screens like this and you can take action and, and, and have good data presented to your users. Uh, we have some other tools like the manufacturing visualizer that's out there um, that we have another session recorded on. Um, well worth, you know, watching that as well to get into the detailed scheduling side of it. And then, um, but having, you know, the ability to get this information presented to your planners in an accurate way and, and in a timely real-time fashion is, is the goal here. So all this information on this planning page, for example, is updated in a real-time manner because it's going against actual live data. So as you're updating the system, changing your shop orders, and they're getting completed and closed out and released and reserved, all this information is being updated real-time. Here's just another view of some master scheduling um, from, a, from a scheduling standpoint. Um, just another lobby page example. Um, there's a number of these that are out of the box, but again, a lot of customers tend to customize them for their planners and, and schedulers um, to make sure that they're getting the, the proper information um, displayed that they need to take action on. So a lot of good information can come from the system if we've got the, the good data going in. So. Um, you know, just another kind of recap here a little bit about I'll just pop through a couple of the links here. Uh, the production shop orders, you know, we do support sign off type functionality with those. You know, we do some manufacturing inspection. If you get into the quality management areas, we've got some other recording recordings on, on quality management and stuff. Um, we do the user ID, date and timestamp and notes and such, but making sure that that routing information is set up properly, making sure your lead times, making sure your work center information is set up properly is it's very key so that when it starts to schedule various operations throughout the system, you're getting proper number of hours. And when you're looking at the actual hours versus your capacity, you know, what your planned hours are, you want to make sure that you've got the best data in the system. So again, back to the routing there, it's it's something very important to keep an eye on as well to make sure you've, you've got that as accurate as possible. So the full planning process, hopefully that gives you a little idea of some things kind of a little bit more back to the basics maybe of the basic data and such. And, and hopefully that gave you a little idea of what some key areas to keep an eye on. Um, we find this with different customers at different times, um, different phases of their their life cycle. And you know, if you if you have planners that are out there and struggling with things, it might be good to to have them take a look at some of these basic data areas and make sure that that's correct. And then you should be seeing better results in the end. So uh, with that, I think that's all I have for today. Um, I thank you for your time. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact your uh, any of your IFS contacts uh, for any further information. Thank you.